السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتدى بسنته لا يوم الدين وبعد Last weekend we had a very special program in one of the masajids Darus Salam they have a new building and inshallah hopefully that new building will be fully functional in the near future until now they use it for Salatul Jumu'ah and for other programs the likes of which we had last weekend so this program which is conducted once a month only for boys high school college university boys this this program, that program there in Darus Salaam last month was very special because it was very a very great number of youngsters in attendance, one, and two, because when an effort is made and not just talk, and I've been talking for 14 weeks, which is a very long period of time, had I invested this time myself, this is my personal opinion, if I would have invested this time with the help of others and by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps reaching out to those that were f trying to focus on, those that were trying to target. I think, personally, for those that might be listening, there's quite a few sitting in front of me today too, mashallah. I think that that would have proved more beneficial. But nevertheless, we have to talk about it too. We have to raise awareness about it too. We have to know that it's true, it's, it's happening, it's a thing, and that every measure has to be taken, whatever we can, whatever is in our ability to do so, to try and prevent it. Nevertheless, that program happens every single month, and I highly encourage every high school, university, college student, as well as the younger ulama, and also those who may be ex-students, those who have recently graduated, to try and join this program. I can keep you updated. And those of us tuning into the SMA WhatsApp groups, they can also keep you informed as to when these programs take place, the venues for these programs, and the timing specifically for these programs. But those are programs after which, before which, an effort is demanded. We, namely, last weekend, our group, we worked non-stop for hours and hours. Fortunately for us, there was a group of youngsters who had already prepared lists of students, those youngsters that they thought needed to be visited. Some who were part of gangs, some who were not so actively involved but may, had, may have had acquaintances with those involved in gangs and others that just were probably distant from the masjid. They didn't frequent the masjid as much as possible. So we visited so many of them. Over two days, we had a chance to visit many. Now we weren't guaranteed that the, these individuals whom we were speaking to, addressing and visiting were going to show up to the program, but we work. Results are in the hands of Allah. We just make the effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us the results. And whatever effort we make will not go in vain. Even this effort here, this talking, hopefully it doesn't go in vain. This raising awareness, they're speaking about the problems. So that was a very special program. And once again, it's begun. And inshallah, it will take place every single month. And we hope that all the young boys, your sons, your nephews, your friends that are listening, they will make an effort to join. Every single one of them should join. So we can speak about how we can attract the youth to the a'mal and the activities that take place in the masjid. I have this dream all the time. Just as we have our very senior, dear uncle sitting with us now even, they're always the ones that frequent the masjid. If you come to this masjid at 5 o'clock in the morning, you will find some of them here, amazingly. I came by accident a few times. I couldn't sleep, so I decided to come. There were people here at 5 in the morning. Fajr is only at 6.20. Nevertheless, why can't that be the youngster? These people that we're trying to reach out to. Who said... 
where did this come from? Why is this so, so, it's so misunderstood, it's so, this ideology, this thinking, why can't it be just a bunch of 20 year olds in the first, second, I'm not taking your places away, these, these places, mashallah, but why can't we have these youngsters in the masjid? Why can't they be the ones here first for Salat? Why can't be, they be the ones that are here 15 minutes before every Salat? Why don't we aspire as youngsters, I'll include myself with them, to be here in the masjid just as much as the elders do? Why don't we do this? Why? Why? These are questions. Why is it that the children, the youngsters, the youth, the teenagers are so distant? Only after a very long time, the word that I use there, some Jesus appears and perhaps is able to reach out to them, to talk to them, they can approach him, they can speak to him, then they're influenced or then they're inspired and then they come and a few of them show up to the masjid. But why can't it be like this all the time? Why is it that that 60 year old or 70 year old or sometimes 55 year old who is so zealous to come to the masjid, why can't they be a 16 or 17 year old? Yes, we have more desires, or yes, we have more, you know, there's so many more fancies, there's so many more whims, there's so many more distractions, there's so many more. That's true, absolutely. That's why we get much more reward when we choose to come. Allah has kept a special place for us on the Day of Judgment. So again, I reiterate the same. So, we're not allowed. Uh, excuse me. We have to, we have to try. Every single one of us has to try to encourage any youngster that we have an influence over, whoever it may be. It could be a brother, it could be our, our friend, our cousin. We should encourage them. We should encourage every single one of them. Anyways, further with our, di di wow. further with our discussion now, we've continued for a couple of weeks. We will continue to discuss brotherhood in Islam. Because this is a big problem, a very big problem. What starts off with just the comment that was passed, a negative, a derogatory comment that was passed, leads, in, leads to some serious feud, serious beef, serious conflict, serious opposition, serious problems. It started with a comment. People don't like that they're their reputation, people don't like that they themselves should be put down or humiliated, especially when it's done in front of others. Those putting them down, those saying these things, want to make sure that it's heard by others just so they could flex their muscle in front of others to show others what they're made of. Nonsense! With a, with a fellow Muslim, this is completely contra, uh, contrary to the teachings of Rasulullah wasallam. It should have been the opposite. When I saw that somebody else's reputation was put on the line, somebody else was being put down, somebody else was being degraded, somebody else was being defamed, I should have made every single effort myself to try and uplift his reputation, to try and uplift his personality. Today it's the opposite. If we had the ability to do so, we probably wouldn't. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Illa masha'Allah. And if we don't have the ability to do so, we're just sitting there quiet. Silence sometimes is violence. If we're not saying anything, we're equally responsible, we're equally sinful, as a matter of fact, listening to what was not supposed to be said. And that's all, with, that's all it started with. It's nonsense. I heard you said this about me. That's where it started. I heard you've been saying this about me. I'm using nice words. I heard, I heard you've been talking blank about me. That's where it starts. And where it ends? Wallahi, without exaggeration, one buried six feet under the feet. Yeah, a mother who just lost her child. Because what started so small, so trivial, so petty, pathetic, and it became something so big and it escalates and it ultimately results in that. We don't know, A, who we are. B, we don't know the rights of who we're dealing with. They may not be your relative. They may not be your brother's from the same mothers biologically, but because they're fellow Muslims, Allah has given them tremendous rights. So we spoke a little bit last week about making dua for one another. Don't forget whatever we've discussed. These aren't my teachings. This is not what I put together. These are prophetic. And it's guaranteed that this is going to work, period. 
It's not that it's going to work for some and not work for others. It's going to work in one era and it's not going to work in another. This is not, no. This is going to work all the time for everyone until the day of Qiyamah. Make dua for one another. You know you have problems with someone. You don't know. That person might just become very close and dear to you. I hate to say this, not that I have, hopefully I don't have any problems, big problems with anyone. I, I've encountered this, I've experienced this, and it actually works. Nevertheless, in today's discussion, what are these rights? Some of these things are so simple. Some of these things are literally take sometimes a couple of seconds of our time, other times a little longer. But these are rights. Allah has given these rights to every Muslim over another Muslim. It is our duty, it is our responsibility to fulfill these rights. And of course, this list goes on. And this one particular hadith of Tirmidhi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, narrated Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, that a Muslim has six rights over another Muslim. Six. In this particular hadith, again, there are so many others that we find in numerous traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here in this one particularly, number one, to greet him with peace when he meets him. This is something, A, that has not only been abandoned or neglected, forgotten, it's done selectively, which is so wrong. We make salam. Who we make salam with? With those whom we know. Rasulullah said in another hadith, It doesn't matter if you know the person or you don't know the person, we are expected to make salam with everyone. We make salam with those we know. We know him, we've seen him, we've heard him, we've, whatever it was, so we made salam with him. We didn't make salam with anybody else though. This is completely contrary to Rasulullah's sunnah, his ways and his teachings. And if we don't know, this brings about immense love. That's what we've been talking about, squashing all this problems, all this beef and all this. Yes, this brings about love, making salam. This is like metaphysics, you won't understand it, but it will. Rasulullah said, لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا You're not going to enter Jannah until you believe, until you have complete Iman. And you won't attain complete Iman, perfection in Iman, until you love one another. So, shall I not tell you of something which if you did, you would cause love to spread amongst yourselves. This brings about love. What is it? How simple, what an amazing teaching. Make salam abundant. Making salam with the one I know, making salam with the one that I, I, I'm affiliated with, I'm acquaintances with, I'm, that's not making salam abundant. Abundance and salam is making salam with everyone. This sounds crazy, it sounds kind of... Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu used to go to the marketplace and buy absolutely nothing. We go to the marketplace, well, we used to go to the mall, and we used to window shop. He wouldn't even do that. He'd just stand there and do nothing. Seems like he was doing nothing, apparently. Somebody asked him, Abdullah, what do you do here? You come, you don't buy, you don't look, you don't... He says, I just come here to make salam with people. I know there's a lot of people that come to the marketplace. This is where I get a lot of good deeds for myself. You know how particular the Sahaba were about making salam? Two of them were walking. And a tree, in halat baynahuma shajara, a tree would come between them. Aw jidar, aw hajar. Or a wall would come between them. Or a rock would come between them. So literally, two walking outside, there's a bench, there's a bus stop. You just walk around it and you continue walking together. They would walk, any of these obstacles come in the way, they would meet again. Salamu alaikum. That sounds like. If somebody does that in this area, bro, relax. It's a little too much, it's a little extra. It's a little extra reward, that's for sure. But apart from that, it looks awkward to us. But to them, they heard it once from Rasulullah Wasallam. They lived by it till they died. And to this extent, like people would think, he's just showing off. This guy's probably a, he's probably, you know, I, I don't want to say anything else, but 
That's what people would consider them. They're maniacs. This guy's he's out of his mind. What's he doing? What's the point of this? I meet somebody after seven months, after this whole hiatus, I meet somebody, probably didn't even make salam. And what's sh more strange is when we think we're so close to someone, we just start talking. We don't even make salam. And then the, the, the salam that we make is another chapter. This and this and this. Salam, there's nothing like it in the world. It can't be replaced, period. There's no greeting in, 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 other, in any other creed or religion or country in the world that can replace Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You have blessed this person with a simple greeting. That's what you, and there's no greeting more blessed than this, period. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said so. We don't make it ourselves and we don't have a habit of returning it either. This brings about love. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you want love? Here is the remedy for love. Here is the ingredient for love. Make salam with everyone. Yeah, some people are going to get annoyed. No problem. You're not doing anything wrong. They're getting annoyed is absolutely wrong. Make salam so common. I don't know how many times we've probably spoken about this, but yes, just do it. And it brings about love. So that's one. When they make salam with us, we must reply to the salam too. To make salam is sunnah. To reply to the salam is wajib. It's a must, it's compulsory, it's not an option. We're responsible, we're, 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 we're accountable if we don't reply to someone's salam. We have to. And if you've got big issues with someone and it's been three whole days, uh-oh, we were actually falling into a much more grave mistake. لا يحل لمسلم أن يهجر أخاه فوق ثلاث. Three days goes by and you haven't squashed the problem. Uh-oh, this has become haram. It is not permissible to abandon talking to someone, somebody that you used to talk to, somebody that you don't, you know, you, 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 now you have a problem with, you can't leave him and disown him for more than three days. Three days is what you needed to get your head straight, to realize this isn't a joke, to realize this is your fellow Muslim brother, to realize that he is, he is very valuable, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you take three days to relax, to calm down, you're composed, you're collected, you have to go back. If it's only salam that it takes, you've done your job. Just don't let it go continue. Anyways, that's one. Number one, to do what? When they make salam, to reply to the salam and to greet everyone with salam. Okay, salam, salam. Number two, to respond to his invitation. Any sort of invitation, whatever invitation, it could be a walima, it could be an aqiqa, it could be this, it could be that. These are the good invitations. But if they invite you to go to the bad place, and you know exactly what place is bad, and don't ask Mufti to try to make it good for you, because it doesn't become good. What's bad is bad. That's it. Al halal ubayyin wal haram ubayyin. That's it. It's clear, you weren't supposed to be there. You know what happens there. You know the place is filled with smoke. You know you're gonna see all sorts of people of all sorts of genders. There used to be two, now there's multiples. You're gonna see everyone, you're gonna see everything, you're gonna hear everything. Just don't go there, period. Even if they invite you. And then <laughs> the clever one's gonna tell you, brother, you can't refuse my invitation. You're out of your mind. You know what you're inviting me to? You're inviting me to Jahannam. You can refuse somebody's invitation to Jahannam, but any other invitation, if you don't have a legitimate excuse, don't you show up. I'll be honest, I had to be somewhere at 8 o'clock tonight. I'm just going to delay it a little bit and then we're going to be gone. That's fine. He invited me for dinner. I'll show up. It's halal. Nothing haram that's going to go on. It's a dinner. I haven't seen him in so long. He used to go in Jamaat with me every single month. I went last week without him. I think he found out because while I was in Jamaat, he messaged me. When's the next time we're going? You didn't ask me in seven months. Why are you asking me the week I'm in? Anyways, it's okay. I feel bad, but we're only restricted to eight, num eight in number now. So inshallah, we'll go with him again. But nevertheless, he's a nice guy. He didn't abandon me and said, instead he invited me for dinner. If they invite you to a good place, they invite you for dinner, they invite you for tea, they invite you for breakfast, gladly accept it. You're not allowed to reject, you're not, you're not allowed to refuse. Unless you have a very, you, you have a commitment, you have an appointment, that's fine. This brings about love. This draws the mercy of Allah. This squashes, this destroys and annihilates problems. Muslims have problems, we have problems with our own siblings sometimes. 
I don't go to my brother's house. It's been 16 years. Why don't you go to your brother's house? They hate it when you ask them, but if you're very close, they'll tell you. Because he, his daughter got married, he never invited me. So you abandoned him for 16 years. I see. You know, these are real life stories, huh? These aren't things that I make up. These are real life stories. Brothers who refuse to talk to one another. Not worth it. Especially blood brothers. Definitely not worth it. Number three, to respond to his sneeze. Now, when you sneeze, we know what we have to say. Alhamdulillah. So say it loud. This brings about love. Again, this is, these are ingredients to destroy whatever problems we have. You say it loud. Alhamdulillah. Say it loud. Alhamdulillah. Make sure the, pers the persons that are sitting in your midst or around you can hear you. Otherwise, you sneeze and they don't say Alhamdulillah. They don't even have to respond to your sneeze. You didn't say anything. You didn't, you didn't thank Allah. You don't deserve to be given a nice dua. You should have thanked Allah. Then you'll be given the response. Nevertheless, he says Alhamdulillah. She says Alhamdulillah. You respond. What is the response? Yarhamukallah. There is a moment in time every single day where any dua that is made by anyone, it is readily accepted by Allah. We don't know that time, so don't ask. Sorry, but I just don't know. So, the moment this person sneezed, he said, Alhamdulillah. And you said to him, Yarhamukallah. May Allah have mercy on you. If that was that time where Allah Ta'ala's dua, any dua that was made to Allah was accepted, your dua for this person being showered with the mercy of Allah strikes, this person is set for life. This is love. These are the ingredients for love. You don't like the person too bad. You have to reply. If he says Alhamdulillah, and some people will do this, you might be sitting with them sometimes, and uh, you know there's problems. They'll say Alhamdulillah loud just to make sure to see whether or not you can. You have to reply, regardless what your problem is. That's your problem. This is the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's a must. These are the rights of a Muslim over every other Muslim. Number three, number four, to visit him when he is sick. We should do this. Of course, we have to maintain the etiquettes for visiting, especially the sick. And nowadays, you. Uh, Sadly, we don't visit anyone that's sick. And if you think you're sick, don't let others visit you as well. That's just now. And even the sneezing. I messaged one of the muftis replied. He said, well, nowadays you don't reply to the sneeze, you run. But unfortunately, that's not the sunnah. Yes, if it does happen in your midst, we're covered with masks anyways. But the sunnah is when you're at home, you're in the masjid, you're at school, you're with your friends, you must reply to the sneeze. The sunnah doesn't change with COVID. Yes, there is an exception to one or two things, but to visit him when he is sick, you visit him. You recite all the du'as that you know, du'as. So when you have to visit a sick person, there's rules, there's guidelines. So what are amongst the rules and the guidelines of visiting a sick person? That you make du'a for him. You make du'a. Du'a brings love. Du'a destroys problems. This is what we're looking for. Every single one of these ingredients is, wow, it's subhanAllah. It is so, and you can only appreciate and acknowledge that it's got to be from above the heavens. Rasulullah did not speak on his own accord. This, this is what Allah has inspired. This is divine inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the tongue of Rasulullah You're going to go to visit him? You're going to have to make dua for him. And by the way, when you go to visit a sick person, we would think that he needs our dua. Fair enough. Everybody needs everybody's dua, especially our own. However, ask the sick individual to make dua for you as well. Because the dua of a sick person is accepted by Allah like the dua of the angels who make no mistakes. So ask the sick person to make dua for us also. Just like we make dua for them, but make dua for them. أذهب البأس رب الناس وشفي أنت الشافي لا شفاء إلا شفاء وكلا يغادر سقما بسم الله يرقيك من كل شيء يؤذيك من شر كل نفس وعين حاسد الله يشفيك بسم الله يرقيك بسم الله تربة أرضنا بريبقة بعضنا ليشفى سقيمنا بإذن ربنا بسم الله الكبير عوض بالله العظيم من كل عرق نعار ومن شر حرنا. When you go to see someone and you read all these dua for them and the duas, the list of duas goes on. This person's perception of you will definitely change. Not only did you think about him when he was in this situation, when he was sick, you also prayed for him, you made dua for him. If there was a problem, 
It will, hopefully. We have hope in Allah and this is what we're going to try. By fulfilling this right of that fellow Muslim brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove problems. Number five, to follow his funeral prayer when he dies. We should make it a habit of going, of attending as many janazas as possible. It reminds us of death. We should speak about death, but nobody speaks about death. It's sad, I was sitting once with some family and one of the people in the gathering were talking about death. They very abruptly and very frankly said, can we change the subject? I don't want to talk about death. Rasulullah said the complete opposite. Talk a lot about death. And this person said, I don't want to talk about death. It's so sad. It's so... Nobody wants to hear it. But you have to hear it though. Because we're so lost and engaged in the things of this world. We forget we're going to die. And then when a person dies, one week goes by. Oh, I, I still can't take it. What do they say? I still, I still can't accept it. There's a word that, that they use. I still, I'm still having trouble... Uh, I can't let this, I can't digest this, or there's something that people say, because we never even thought about it. We ourselves were in complete ghafla, oblivion about death. So when somebody dies, they've been dead for one week. They've been buried and everything has already begun. Their qiyamah has already started. We're still saying, no, I don't believe he's dead. I don't think, no, no, I, I just can't. I just can't accept it. I just can't. It's been a week. Yeah. We need to talk about it more, more often. And thus, of course, prepare for it too. Nevertheless, we should go to the graveyard. What did what, what somebody say? It's a silent place with a very loud message. When we go to the graveyard, oh, it'll wake us up. And if it doesn't, then unfortunately, like, like one of the ulama said, the Sahaba were more cognizant of death in the marketplace than we are of death in the graveyard. We're in the graveyard on our phones talking to one another. Well, what time is game two to uh, game three tonight? Eastern Conference Finals. We're in the graveyard worried about something come bring us no benefit in this dunya. No, absolutely no benefit in the akhirah. But that's unfortunately what's happening. And visit, visit, go to the graveyard, visit the graves, whether you have somebody there or not, and attend and follow the janazah. Two mountains of good deeds. Two mountains. You pray Salatul Janaza, one mountain. One Qirat, one mountain. You, 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 after performing the Salatul Janaza, you follow the Janaza to the graveyard and help with whatever needs to be done, the rites and the rituals, until the body is buried. Two whole mountains of good deeds. A reminder of death. A reminder that we're also going to die. Every single one of us is going to leave this world empty-handed one day. It's a good reminder. And we shouldn't just do it for those that we know. Those that we go to the janazas for are not just those that we know, sorry. We go for those that are very close to us. Or close to someone that's close to us. Why? Rasulullah didn't say that this is the right of a fellow relative. This is the right of somebody of your kith and kin. No. This is the right of every single Muslim. As a matter of fact, in the Hanafi school of thought, it's, it's somebody has to do it, but as many as possible that can afford to do it based on the circumstances and based on the conditions and based on everything, they should join. Go with the janazah and remind ourselves that one day I'm going to be praying. Uh, sorry, today I'm praying janazah. Tomorrow my janazah will be prayed. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu said, Pray, sallu qabla an tusallu alayhi or ukama qala radiyallahu an. He said, perform salah before your salat is performed on you. In other words, janazah salah. Start praying now before a day comes that people will be praying on you. They will be performing your salatul janazah for you. That's number five, to attend the janazah, the funeral prayer, and to love for him what he loves for himself. To love for his brother what he loves for himself. This is kind of like everything in a nutshell. You would want that when you die, everybody should attend your janazah. You would want that when you sneeze, everybody says, Yarhamukallah. That story, I can't remember where it came from. I could assume, I could give you the name of a book, but that would be extremely wrong. Nevertheless, we were told this story. One of the scholars was traveling on a ship, and then what happened? He sneezed. And every single person on this ship replied to his sneeze by saying, Yarhamukallah, and the whole ship rocked. So there was this, I don't know, king or sultan or governor on the other side of the water. He asked for this ship to be brought back to shore. Something like this. It could be completely wrong, but there is a lesson. This was a very great man. Everybody replied to his sneeze. We would want that everybody replies to our sneeze. 
then maybe we shouldn't be so miserly when it comes to others sneezing. We want that everybody should make salam with us. Maybe we should initiate salam with others as well. We want that when, when, when I make an invitation, oh, when you make an invitation, and when it's at our home, and people don't show up, oh, I'm still in trouble, by the way. Somebody got married a couple of days ago, oh, very big mistake. Biggest, a pretty big mistake. He invited me to his walima, and I didn't show up. And he met me yesterday in the masjid right outside here. Yesterday was Friday, maybe Thursday, excuse me. Thursday or Friday, I can't remember what I had for breakfast today. He said, Assalamu alaikum, I said, Wa alaikum salam. He said, I haven't forgotten, and I'm not going to forget until you make it up for me. Wallahi, it bothered me so much. I can't remember if it was yesterday or the day before when I was going to sleep and think to myself, how do I make up for someone's not attending their walima? I said, very simple, just hold another walima. I promise I'll show up for the second one. <laughs> This is the only conclusion I came up with. That is not the solution, and I, I don't think he'll listen to this. He's a busy man, but I'm not going to tell him this anyways. Nevertheless, we want that what I have an invitation. He is upset and he is offended. He is really offended. We want if I have a little get-together or a little dawat or a little... Which, of course, keeping in mind the government's directives, especially now with the rising numbers in COVID-19, we want everybody and any one individual that doesn't show up, oh, we take note of it and we take him into account for it. We want this should be with me. That You should do this with others as well. I should have participated in that walima. But this is everything in a nutshell. Number six, love for others what you love for yourself. You wouldn't want this to be you, so don't let this, you wouldn't want anybody to backbite you, so don't let any brothers, any, anyone else, any others be backbitten in your presence. You don't want anybody's reputation to go down. You don't want, sorry, yours to go down. You shouldn't want it. This is true brotherhood from the Quran and Sunnah. This is true love. Anything that you want for yourself, that's what you should wish for others as well. When we give, may Allah forgive us. We know we give leftovers. We know we give what's, what's, what's at the bottom. We don't give what's, what's the best of what's ours. This is not what Rasulullah taught. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to practice all of these things. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to share with others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with true love for one another. Because the ummah is, oh, there's too many problems. I mean, one is on a large scale. You know, big, big conflicts between countries or so on. One is even amongst ourselves. It's very, it's, it's, it's nasty. It's not nice. It's completely against the teachings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi May Allah give us the understanding. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. And I shadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Yeah.